little bit basic you need to know because this terminology you will see in questions some words all normal hematopoiesis all red or blood cells come from bone marrow stem cells then stem cells further will go along two lineages either common lymphoid progenitor lineage or common myeloid lineage or line then common myeloid line further will develop into granulocyte monocyte progenitors or megakaryocyte erythroid our lecture today will be about erythroid normoblast erythrocyte so normoblast are earliest immature mature cells we call them erythrocyte or red blood cell again you need to know this little bit terminology normoblast polychromatic cell then erythrocyte today's topic is all about diseases of erythrocyte so just need to know this terminology normoblast polychromatic cell it means these are immature red blood cells these are immature red blood cells same way you need to know also erythroid when we talk about erythroid means we are talking about immature red blood cells this terminology you will see in questions then normally erythrocytes are deformable flexible they don't have a nucleus under electron microscope they look biconcave by because biconcave shape provides a larger surface area for oxygen diffusion and they are centrally pale centrally pale this is just a little bit basics okay deformable means they are flexible they can squeeze through non nucleated biconcave they are centrally pale around 1% of cells in periphery that are immature immature erythrocyte we call them reticulocyte and they contain inclusions that are remnants of rna this is basic not tested just need to know this terminology 1% of periphery red blood cell are immature erythrocyte we call them reticulocyte then you should know normally they look by concave disc now when blood is separated by centrifugation it is divided into two parts one is plasma small part is buffy coat and then other part is red blood cells red blood cell part what we call the packed cell volume or hematocrit so when we say packed cell volume or hematocrit it is the same thing it is 40 to 45 percent then 55 percent is plasma now this buffy coat this is buffy coat contains white blood cells and platelets and then we when we make a peripheral smear we talk about red blood cells okay we can take a peripheral smear of white blood cells also but here we will be talking about peripheral smear of red blood cells on a slide and we can see under microscope so you should note this terminology packed cell volume or hematocrit so it is 45% of of our blood then approach to anemia now anemia is a shortage of red blood cells but how do we clinically measure it clinically we measure it is by reduction in hemoglobin or hematocrit so when you see values lab values look at either hemoglobin or hematocrit remember what is hematocrit hematocrit is packed cell volume or part of blood that is red blood cell normal what is normal hematocrit 40 to 45 so you should know hematocrit 40 this is percentage but if, if you take a percentage means divided by 100 so 0.39 or they can give you 39 percent it is same thing and this is at hemoglobin when you take these values age and gender must be considered you see criteria in for male anemia also normal values in male 130 and 170 for female these values are little bit lower because females have menses every month so they lose blood so these values are little bit lower in females then newborn 
ओके ट्वेल्व मंथ सो क्लिनिकली हाउ डू वी डायग्नोज अनिमिया बाय लुकिंग एट आदर हीमोग्लोबिन वैल्यूज और हिमाटोकट दीज वैल्यूज यू सी इन यू के बट इफ यू आर प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर यूर सेमिली एग्जाम ओके जस्ट लाइक डिफरेंट मीयरिंग यूनिट्स यू एस ए पीपल विल यूज लाइक किलोग्राम यू के पीपल विल लाइक यूज पाउंड सो दीज वैल्यूज आर जस्ट डिफरेंट ग्राम पर लीटर ओके सो नो नीड टू गो टू यूनिट्स जस्ट लुक एट दीज वैल्यूज एंड दे विल बी गिवन इन क्वेश्चन देन एज एंड जेंडर मस्ट बी कंसिडर्ड नाउ वेन वी वर्क अप एन एनिमिया फर्स्ट स्टेप वाट इज दैट यू लुक एट एम सी वी इनिशियल स्टेप रेटिकुलोसाइट काउंट एंड ब्लड सिमियर दीज आर द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग्स दैट यू विल लुक एट ऑन एनी पेशेंट एंड ऑल्सो एन एनी क्वेश्चन वेन एवर दर एनी क्वेश्चन लुक एट दीज थ्री थिंग्स एम सी वी रेटिकुलोसाइट काउंट एंड ब्लड सिमियर एंड थ्रू आउट लेक यूर विल बी फोकसिंग ऑन दीज थ्री थिंग्स इफ यू अंडरस्टैंड दीज थ्री थिंग्स यू कैन डायग्नोज एनी डिजीज एंड वाट आर सिम्टम्स ऑफ अनिमिया जनरल सिम्टम्स ऑफ अनिमिया आर ऑल सेम anemia because hemoglobin carries oxygen if there is anemia there will not be enough oxygen and also we have red color of skin reddish color because of blood hemoglobin so patient will look pale patient will feel tired fatigued patient will have difficulty dyspnea and exertion chest pain syncope dizziness so syncope means fainting dizziness chest pain syncope and dizziness because there is a inadequate oxygenation of the heart and brain so whenever they give you any case the patient patient feels tired patient feels fatigued patient look pale it means this patient they are talking about anemia so again this is normal this is hematocrit red blood cell buffy layer and then plasma in anemia what happens hematocrit goes down hematocrit or hemoglobin what is opposite if hematocrit increases then we call it polycythemia polycythemia this is normal micro hematocrit uh, tubes this is anemia hematocrit will go down or hemoglobin will go down and this is polycythemia and then these values are usa okay if you now look at this table if you are going for plab exam when lab values will be in these units 130 to 170 in adult male but if you are preparing for usml exam or a usa exam then they will give you in gram per deciliter here they give in gram per liter so these units you don't need to remember because they already give in questions they always tell us about normal values so this is normal hematocrit hemoglobin and normal hematocrit laboratory then we also need to understand some other laboratory trends with respect to the population of erythrocyte first is mean cell mean corpuscular volume mcv mcv is the average size or volume of red blood cell normally it is between 80 to 100 you forget units just remember these numbers then mean corpuscular hemoglobin mch average content of hemoglobin per cell mean corpuscular mchc mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration average concentration of hemoglobin in a given volume of packed erythrocyte then rdw red cell distribution width this is coefficient of variation of red cell volume and mean of an iso cytosis means are all red blood cells same or of different size if all red blood cells are of different size means their width is distributed so it is big it is increased if all red blood cells are not of same size we use term an isocytosis they are not of same site so these terms you need to know again most important terms here is mc v or mch but in questions they talk about mchc or rdw also now when we classify anemia classification depends on mcv 
हीमोग्लोबिन कंटेंट हीमोग्लोबिन हाउ मच हीमोग्लोबिन ए सिंगल रेड ब्लड सेल हैज एम सी एच ओके दीज आर द मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट डायग्नोस्टिक वैल्यू इन मोस्ट टाइप्स ऑफ अनिमिया हाउ लुक एट साइज इफ इट इज स्मॉल साइज वी कॉल इट माइक्रोसिटिक एम सी वी विल बी लेस देन सेवेंटी एट आर एटी ओके एंड इफ इट्स एम सी एच इज डिक्रीज नॉट इन हीमोग्लोबन देन वी यूज ट्रम हाइपोक्रोमिक बिकॉज दे विल लुक पेल विदाउट हीमोग्लोबन दे विल नॉट लुक नॉर्मल रेड कलर सो एम सी एच इज डाउन देन वी कॉल इट हाइपोक्रोमिक Now, what are causes of microcytic hypochromic anemia? Iron deficiency, thalassemia. There is one more cause, sideroblastic. We will talk later. So, whenever you see red blood cells are MCV, V, S, M, C, H, both are down, then we will think of only these two diseases. Then, microcytic. What if MCV is bigger, uh, more than ninety-eight or hundred? then it is megaloblastic anemia or myelodysplasia if both of these are normal normocytic normochromic then cause could be most hemolytic anemias anemias of chronic disease acute blood loss or bone marrow failure failure, failure. so in anemia of chronic dis disorder in late stages it can be microcytic so they can give a microcytic classification of anemia of chronic disease also so see most important diagnostic value mcv and mch and one more is peripheral smear so anemia type microcytic hypochromic mch mcv both are low what is what are causes iron deficiency and thalassemia both are normal normocytic normochromic then it is blood loss hemolysis chronic disease or marrow failure macrocytic if mcv is raised then these are megaloblastic anemias we will discuss each in detail and how to diagnose and which concept are exactly tested <coughs> then here we look at mcv and mch then we need to look at reticulocyte count okay a high reticulocyte count indicates that bone marrow is responding to anemia by producing red blood cells so means there is no problem in bone marrow there is no problem in production so this high reticulocyte count is high means cause of anemia is acute bleeding hemorrhage or destruction of red blood cell and this type of anemia what we call it hemolytic anemia if reticulocyte count is low means this is a production to production problem bone marrow is not working remember reticulocyte are immature erythrocyte if bone marrow is working they will produce lot of reticulocyte so failure to produce a reticulocyte response means these levels are low it means there is a bone marrow failure or hematinic hematinic means iron vitamin b12 or folate because to make cells red blood cells we need iron vitamin b12 and folate so we call them hematinic hematinic so remember most important things when we approach anemia first we look at mcv mch then we look at reticulocyte count whether it is high or low and and uh, you should also know that reticulocyte count normally reticulocyte count we know it is, uh, we know that 1% of blood it is percentage 1% of blood is reticulocyte now what was normal hematocrit value 45 55% was plasma out of this 45 1% okay is reticulocyte count but in anemia what happens in anemia hematocrit goes down if hematocrit goes down you know this is a percentage so this will shift but this shift is not real increase because this is a not an absolute value it is a percentage out of 100% normally 45% is normally 45% is hematocrit 
if hematocrit goes down then this will shift automatically so this shift we have to correct that so when you look at lab values they give corrected reticulocyte count but there's a formula for that but that formula you don't need to know just need to know this concept what is reticulocyte corrected reticulocyte count normally because hematocrit goes down so red blood cells will sh reticulocyte count will shift automatically because it's a percentage not an absolute value so in anemia we need to correct for that and um, there's a formula for that but that formula is never tested you don't need to know to uh, remember that okay general rule is the division by two is because shift takes twice as long as reticulocyte to mature anyway this is never tested you just need to know this concept reticul corrected reticulocyte count we have, nowadays we have everything automated so machines you know do it uh, collect uh, digi digi digital computers do this calculation for you but concept you need to know then first mcv then reticulocyte count what is uh, what is uh, next thing we do blood smear blood smear most anemias in questions if you just look at blood smear you have diagnosis they will give further diagnostic value so when we diagnose anemia anemia patient three most important things mcv reticulocyte count and blood smear then anisocytosis means increased variation in red cell size pyclocytes means presence of erythrocytes of abnormal shape and both of these are not non-specific non-specific you see in many hematological and systemic disorder for example what if we don't have spleen when you don't have spleen in this case you see inclusions in red cells these inclusions what we call that howell jolly bodies so whenever in peripheral smear they say howell jolly bodies it means patient doesn't have spleen no spleen and same way is ferrocyte present in hereditary, hereditary spherocytosis if it is cytosis are uh, uh, helmet shaped cells then it's artificial valve damage ttp <laughs> hemolytic uremic syndrome hus same way if you see target cells it is hemoglobinopathies teardrop shaped cells in myelofibrosis acanthosis in severe liver disease severe liver disease now let me just explain these pictures from uh, this peripheral smear shapes from these pictures this is a normocyte normal cell see centrally it is pale if it becomes small what we call it iron deficiency round macrocyte liver disease or alcohol or hypothyroidism oval macrocyte we call it megaloblastic anemia if it is pencil shaped iron deficiency if it's a target you see centrally there is a target okay if it is target then non-specific but for exam purpose it you see in many diseases but for exam purpose whenever you see target disease they are talking about hemoglobinopathy like beta thalassemia the problem hemoglobin micro spherocyte it has become small not biconcave spherocyte this you see hereditary spherocytosis are immune hemolytic anemias are burns thermal injuries in microcytic you see it becomes a hypochromic because mhc decreased but this is a hyperchromic there's no central pale region sickle cell disease homozygous sickle cell anemia tear drop shaped cell myelofibrosis or myelo infiltration schizocyte macroangiopathic hemolytic anemia there are subtypes of that this is also known as helmet shaped so again this is these are abnormal size now abnormal red cell inclusions this is how well jolly bodies you see hyposplenism no spleen this is a normoblast immature leukocytes in a leukoerythroblastic film 
whenever you see normal blast in peripheral smear we call it leucoerythroblastic film or smear and leucoerythroblastic film you see in marrow infiltration myelofibrosis stippled whenever you see basophilic stippling basophilic means blue stippling lead poisoning for exam purpose and if you see erythrocyte containing sidrotic granule sidrotic granules means iron sidrotic again hypoplasm but sidro granules when if for exam purpose remember iron overload reticulocyte these are immature red blood cells they are increased in hemorrhage hemolysis are response to hematonic treat replacement what is hematonic replacement some patient is having iron deficiency anemia now what if it they are having iron deficiency anemia we will give them iron if we replace iron then the bone marrow will start producing red blood cells so reticulocyte count will increase this is how we know whether our treatment is working or not these are heinz bodies denatured hemoglobin denatured hemoglobin you see g6pd deficiency okay so all these you see in peripheral smear and very important this is an uh, again uh, there is a summary now this acanthocyte uh, acanthocyte you see in, in severe liver disease echinocyte means uh, echinocyte thorns like sharp so this is liver disease again the, both acanthocyte echinocyte you see in liver disease fragments fragments another name for this was what schizocyte or helmet shaped cells this is the microangiopathy ttp cardiac valves dic okay t drop cell sickle cells microcyte so all this peripheral smear the terminology should know and which and uh, which disease if you see you also need to know what is the cause of this abnormal shapes again i put another slide so you need to know for example what is rulo formation is tag like a coin whenever you see rulo formation rulo formation it is multiple myeloma but if red blood cells are agglutinated like this then it is autoimmune hemolytic anemia basophilic stippling lead poisoning now let's uh, again these are uh, you should know that basophilic stippling is denatured rna how will jovel body's dna remnant heinz body is denatured hemoglobin so this is just explaining basic science what is heinz body's heinz body is actually the denatured hemoglobin how will jovel body's dna remnant but this is tested in basic science and plab never test is in basic science so uh, there will be no questions about these but if you are preparing for usml exam then they will be tested so you, because usml step 1 is all about basic sciences pathology microbiology histology but plab basic science is not tested so this will not be tested but at least you need to know that how will jovel body's means they are dna remnant okay and at least at this stage you need to know how all jovel bodies means patient doesn't have a spleen or spleen is not working properly now let's do some questions here 19 year old man has had rem spleen removed one year ago now this patient has spleen removed and they give you peripheral smear so spleen removed means no spleen is splenectomy what is this peripheral smear this is how well jolly bodies so what will be cause so red cell with the nuclear fragment okay red cell with the nuclear fragment dna remnant okay so this is answer will be red cell with the nuclear fragment answer is e spleen normally functions to pit nuclei and their fragments because red blood cell doesn't have any nuclei that is job of spleen to remove nuclei and their fragments if spleen is not working nuclei fragments will be left behind red blood cells these nuclear fragments are called how well jo jolly bodies okay let's do some more questions 
Now this is 22 year old man with a hematocrit. You say hematocrit is 70, 17. And they give you patient as a vasoocclusive disease and these things and sickle cell anemia. Which smear you will see? Sickles, this is sickling of cell. So sometimes they give you case and peripheral smear also. We will talk about sickle cell disease in detail later, but just talking about the importance of peripheral smear here. 36 year old woman with a hematocrit of 35, hematocrit of 35, splenectomy. With a splenectomy, what they will have? Howell Jowell bodies. Which one? You see these bodies. Do you see these fragments? Nuclear fragments. 55 year old man with a hematocrit of 28, advanced alcoholic liver disease, awaiting liver transplantation, severe liver disease. Which kind of you see? Burr cells, acanthocyte. These are acanthocyte. You will see severe liver disease. Okay. And a 60 year old, uh, 4 year old patient with a hematocrit, and this patient has a heme positive stool. Means this patient is losing blood in stool. So this old patient, heme positive stool, colon cancer, it is iron deficiency anemia, and iron deficiency anemia, you see pencil shaped cells, cells that are small and hypochromic. And uh, 72 year old man, he has a prosthetic aortic valves. Now aortic valves, they, because they are mechanical valves, so they will damage RBCs, RBCs will be fragmented. So you see fragments, helmet shaped cells, you see, this is fragments. So this is how peripheral smear is very important. So uh, there are answers here, answers you can study later because uh, we can't spend too much time. Just to show you the importance of peripheral smear, how these peripheral smear are tested. As we go ahead, we will do more questions on these also. And now see another case here. This patient is evaluated for anemia, 39 year old, and uh, peripheral smear is shown. You see this, what what is the shape here? It is pencil shaped. Pencil shaped means it is iron deficiency anemia. So I will go pick iron means ferritin. Which of the following test is most likely to be abnormal? Ferritin. Just look. Uh, I have uh, we haven't covered iron deficiency anemia in detail. But just from peripheral smear, now you ask it to review the peripheral smear blood from a patient with anemia. Lact serum lactate dehydrogenase is elevated and there is a hemoglobin urea. Now you still don't know what is the uh, about hemolytic anemia This because this hemolytic anemia we haven't yet covered. But from this peripheral smear, okay. Can you see this? These are fragments. Schizocyte, helmet shaped red blood cell peripheral smear. Means this patient must be having microangiopathic hemolytic anemia or mechanical heart waves, heart valves. So, if mechanical heart valves, patient will have mechanical second heart sound. So, this is, these questions are all about peripheral smear. 